السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انشر علينا رحمتك وأنزل علينا حكمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام uh, It's been a very busy week I know we're receiving our the guests of Allah coming back from the Hajj journey. May Allah grant them a Hajj Mabrur and accept from them and uh, with the hot weather. And also, I think an email reminder didn't go out. So for those, we, and yesterday we had a wonderful program about marriage, um, which was pretty long. So I think people are recovering from that and trying to process everything that they learned. So we're going to keep today very short for that reason. We'll, we'll, we'll make it a little bit of a shorter session, inshallah. But we're at Hikmah aphorism number 65, which is on page 36. خَفْ مِنْ وُجُودِ إِحْسَانِهِ إِلَيْكَ وَدَاوِمْ إِسَاءَتِكْ مَعَهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ ذَلِكَ اسْتِدْرَاجًا لَكْ And then he quotes from Surah Al-A'raf. سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ be fearful when he is continually kind to you and you are continually disobedient to him. This could be a form of step-by-step -step ruining. We will cause them to ruin step-by-step. Step. That we will cause them to ruin step-by-step. Step. From whence they did not know. So this begins with the word khaf. Fear, which is a fi'al amr, and it's translated be fearful, which has the same meaning. And what's mentioned here, before we get to the reason, is that this process, the, the transition is going to happen istidrajan. It's going to happen not suddenly, it's not, you're not going to wake up one day, but it's going to be daraja after daraja after daraja. There's going to be degree after degree after degree. So you're going to be led gradually. You're going to be lured into destruction. It's going to happen uh, without you even realizing it. And then the ayah that's mentioned, of course, is for the disbelievers, sanastadirijuhum, that we will cause them to ruin. Min haythu la ya'lamun from whence they did not know, meaning they weren't even perceiving that it was happening in the moment. Right? When they get to the end and they're like, oh my God, we, we were showing up empty, then it made sense to them. But during the process of istidraj, they don't realize that, it, that it's happening to them. Now why could that also happen to, because that happens to someone that's in a deep ghafla, somebody who's really heedless, who's clueless, who doesn't even know, they said, oh, doesn't have any purpose to their life. So they, of course, they don't perceive it because they're blind, right? But how could it be that the spiritual wayfarer, the one who is Muslim, the one who is seeking guidance, the one that's trying, you know, at the fringes but struggling, how could that person be led astray? That's what doesn't seem to make sense. And why should that person be fearful? The reason is because you can be lulled into a false sense of security that everything is fine, everything is great. So for example, you know, you purchase a house, you do all the statistics, you see, okay, crime is really low, everything is fine, you know, so I can be really lax. So then you don't lock your doors. Meanwhile, somebody's watching you leave the house and not lock your door. And it just so happens that because you are lax, that actually causes you to be robbed. Whereas if you had locked your door, if you were more vigilant, and you hadn't checked the statistics and you didn't keep saying, oh, this is a super safe neighborhood, it wouldn't have happened, right? So by being complacent, you actually invite that ruination. And then you end up being astray. Now, what is the cause for that? Why does that happen? Why can somebody fall into that process? Because of two things that are happening. Number one, min wujudi ihsanihi ilayk. Because Allah is continually good to you. You find that Allah has facilitated your worldly needs and He has also facilitated your other worldly needs. In other cases, you find that you don't have a problem completing your prayers. You don't have a problem. Some people have waited a lifetime to go for Hajj. We saw uh, over 1,500 people pass away in this journey. May Allah have mercy for them and forgive them and enter them into Jannah. 
the exact statistics are unknown because some of it is due to cardiac arrest. But let's say 1,500 for the sake of discussion that have died from heat stroke. Now, I'm not saying that the authorities did not try their best. I think they did try to mitigate that, but could it be done better? Yeah, I mean, of course. There's a, it's a long conversation about whether it can be um, done better, but the fact remains that people are so desperate, right? In particular, there are hundreds of people from Egypt who spent thousands of dollars in order to perform the Hajj that were unauthorized through brokers and that was one of the reasons, not the full reason, for some of the numbers. But it shows that the difficulty and hardship that people go through putting their life at stake just in order to, which by the way we're not encouraging people to do, because Allah said, Man ilayhi sabila, whoever is able. And normally sometimes we say, why is it so general? Alhamdulillah, the generality is, is a mercy for us, because we can't anticipate everything in the future. Right? Maybe in the future we can teleport, you know, Star Trek style. So then we don't have to worry about transportation, but maybe due to global warming it's going to be 60 degrees Celsius. I don't know. I mean, your guess is the way that the planet is going, <laughs> I mean, it, it seems within the realm of possibility. So we ask Allah for al afia and well-being. So because Allah has made these things easy, so you start to th become complacent. That I can take it for granted. And number two, is dawami isa'atik. So asa'a is to do bad. Right? Say'a is something bad. Asa'a ahsana. So asa'a means to do something wrong. When you are continually wrong, meaning you are in a state of disobedience. Ma'asiyah. When you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when these two things are happening and joined together, an yakuna dhalika istidrajan lak. This could be a form of step-by-step -step ruining. This is an excellent translation because Dr. Tariq has really simplified the causal element here, alhamdulillah. So you should fear the continuous presence of the Almighty's generosity despite your continued doing, uh, wrongdoings and abandoning his orders because this could be a form of luring you and leading you so he seizes you suddenly to punishment. Right? Now in the commentary of Ibn Ajiba, it's mentioned that you should fear being drawn and led on by blessings. And this fear is a sign and a characteristics of the muttaqun, of the pious believers. The absence of fear with continued wrongdoing is a characteristic of the kafirin. So whenever you find some of the pious people, this has been 1,000%, 100% my experience that when I meet righteous people and you say that, oh, you look like a very righteous person, they, ne they will never agree to that. They said, no, we are only trying our best to show gratitude to Allah. ذَلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ Allah. They said, this is the fadl from Allah. You find somebody, they recite well and and you say, MashaAllah, you, you have a great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they say, this gift is from Allah, not from me. Right? This is the nature of taqwa, is that they fear to attribute any of that to themselves let, because they might be responsible for that. And so we find from the righteous people that the blessings, they don't lead them to be complacent. Rather, they become more fearful because they say, wait a minute, Allah has given me more rooms in my house than people that live here. More than what we need. If each person took a room, they would have their own room. Many of us growing up, that was a foreign concept. Most of the houses they had, other than the master bedroom, how many rooms were there in the house? In America, I'm talking about, forget about, I'm not talking about other countries. How many rooms did houses have in America? There was only one kind of house. It was a three bedroom house. That was the normal house in America. Why three? The one is the master, so let's cross that out. Now it leaves two. Why two bedrooms? Two kids, but people used to have, the average in America was three point something. It was almost three and a half. In America, having four kids was normal. Three kids was normal. Two was almost unheard of. And if you go to the rural areas, forget about it. 
you know, five, six, and beyond, right? It's like a little house on the prairie style. But why two? Why do the houses have two? Because how many genders are there? There's boys and girls. That was it. All the boys stayed in one room and girls stayed in the other room and we had bunk beds. In other countries, they don't even have bunk beds. They would just sleep all, all next to each other. Whereas in America, it's a little bit better, so they have bunk beds. But normally, house, but we are in Naim. We are in a state of bliss and ease that we have facilitated for our families. Most of us and those that are struggling, we ask Allah to make easy for them. But because of that, the righteous people are like, oh my God, how am I going to thank Allah for this? You know, it's, it's so hot outside, and we open the tap, and because the water runs underground, I have well water, so it's coming from deep underground. I turn on the water, and the water is cool. Many of us have ice makers, and it comes through the fridge, and the water comes out. Did we ponder on that? The fact that every morning we wake up and we still have our sight. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So, but the pious, their reaction is like, I don't want too many blessings. I don't want Allah to give me too much. I just want to be normal. Because if Allah gives me too much, what am I afraid of? What would I, what would I not be able to do if I have too many blessings? This is a whole different, we have to reprogram, think differently. And I, I've met people like this, that they're like, I just want to be regular. I don't want anything. I don't want Allah to give me anything special. Because if I get anything extra, I can't even imagine how I can uh, give gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just working on doing shukr for the stuff I already have, for the basics that Allah created me. He granted me life. He, he gave me, I mean, uh, Dr. Tariq, he mentioned this yesterday, the great blessing of growing up in a house, knowing your nasab, knowing your lineage. I mean, we live in a society in which between 10 and 15 percent, I don't recall the exact current figure, I think it's declining. People nowadays actually in America, more people know who their father is, right, compared to in previous generations. But between 10 and 20 percent don't know who their father is. And then there's an even bigger percentage who might know who their father is, but don't know their father. And now there's even a growing percentage of people, even though it's small, who don't know their mother. I mean, we can't even begin to understand how that psychologically affects a person. So if we just say, like, I grew up knowing who my parents are, can we even begin to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? So on the opposite side, there's the absence of fear with continued wrongdoing. And this is why the righteous people, whenever they make a mistake, it's not just about the sin. It's that feeling of regret. That is the essence of tawbah and nadam. When you regret something, then automatically your tawbah is sincere because you're like, Ya Allah. You don't just, you're not doing tawbah because you hate to be punished. You're doing tawbah because you actually hate the thing that you did. And when you hate the thing that you did, are you really going to do it again? You're not. The one that only fears punishment is, gonna, is liable to do it again because they're like, well, oops. But if you actually hate that action, then that, an yakrah al then for a human being to hate, an yaudak fil kufri, to return back to disbelief. To the same extent that you hate to be thrown to the hellfire. This is one of the three categories for halawat al-iman. So Allah says that is a characteristic of the kafirin. Because the ayah said that istidraj is for the disbelievers. So if you are lured into that, if you're thinking that, well, I'm still fine. Nothing bad has happened to me. So that must mean that it's okay. That is an attribute of the mushrikeen. And this deceives them that they're on a good path, even though they're not. He leads them on and suddenly he seizes them to punishment. And this is also not the topic for today, but this is what happens with tyrants. We see that with te uh, terror states that occupy other countries, that uh, violate international humanitarian law, 
it looks like they're getting away with it. But the law of the universe is supreme. And that's the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we know, of course, it can last for some period, but it won't last forever. And similarly, on the individual level, there are tyrants. Fir'aun, numatti'uhum uh, qalila, we'll give them a little bit of respite. ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ غَلِيظٍ Then they get a very severe and a very weighty punishment. Right? So they get deceived and suddenly he seizes them. Then Allah says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ right? And then Allah says, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبَوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So what it means that Allah says that when you forgot the, of what they were reminded, meaning by disobeying, we open to them the gates of all things. Wait a minute. These people forgot the message. They disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, we open the gates of everything. Wait a minute. Why are they getting all the good stuff? And what about us? We're trying our best to do the right thing. Until when they rejoiced about what they have been given from the worldly pleasantries that they didn't offer thanks, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta ida farihu bima utu, right? Akhadnahum baghta fa ida humubilisun. That we seized them suddenly and they were confounded. They were despairing of the Lord's mercy. Okay? So it was said about the ayah that we just talked about that what it means is that we give them blessings. Allah, as a punishment to them, he gives them. So sometimes when Allah gives you, he could be taking. And sometimes he could be taking, but in that is Ayn al -Ata. He could be actually giving you. Because with those blessings, he's making them forget to thank them because they get too secure. They get too comfortable with the blessings, right? So the, the, they get used to Dawam and Ni'am. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Dawam and Ni'am, that Allah will continue the blessings. But when people start out denying that it comes from Allah, then they get very secured and they become veiled from al-wahib. They become veiled from the benefactor, the al-mun'im. So they see the ni'mah, they see the gift, but they don't see al-mun'im. They don't see the benefactor. And then akhadnahum. Then we seize them. So what is the solution? The solution is to be cautious. It is to be wary. Make choices for yourself. Don't be blinded by arrogance. Even signs, you might get signs in your life that Allah has given you from many of his blessings. You ask him for things, du'as are answered. You hope for things, Allah fulfills your hopes. And that, those that are listening and they might be laughing, they might be like, that's not, please, can I have that life? Because that's not my life at all. You know, some of you listening, you might be in crisis mode. You might be filled with fear or, and you might be overwhelmed by your scenario. Um, only Allah knows, you know, what your condition is. But the believer, even if they're going through all that blessings, they're balanced. So even though they, they're in a position that kind of leads a person to too much hope, they lean and balance with fear. And likewise, the person is going through some difficulty or hardship, the natural tendency is to veer into fear, but that person needs an optimistic and a hopeful message. Because if you just see all of the blessings and you don't see the benefactor, then you're going to be very complacent. So the solution to this is to always be thankful for the blessing. And this goes back to the rule that we began this topic with from Surah Ibrahim. Wala in shakartum, that if you give thanks, la azidannakum, then we will surely increase you. Wala in kafartum, and if you deny the gifts, inna adabi la shadeed, my punishment is severe. So the more that we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah protects the gift that He's given you. He writes it as a good deed for you. And it's a reason for Allah to continue to give. Because Allah is shakur. So if Allah is appreciative, then did we ponder that Allah appreciates our gratitude? I mean, Allah is so generous that He gives us a thing in the first place. We already owe Him a debt because we exist. Then He gives us something. 
and we're already supposed to thank him. But if we thank him, Allah appreciates that, writes it as a good deed for us, includes us from his righteous servants, and uses that as a reason to give us even more. So he gives us credit for something which is mandatory anyway. Isn't that just like the Maghrib Salah we were going to do? Are we required to pray Maghrib? We are. It's mandatory. Did you ever think how generous Allah is? Isn't it crazy that we get rewarded for our prayers? Think about it. I mean, these are like the required actions, right? It's like when you, when you take a course in university, what's the maximum score? It's usually 100. What do you start out with? Right? You have to earn. I mean, some people you start with 100 and then you lose points. Others you have to earn. But basically every assignment is allotted a certain amount. So let's say, uh, as many of you know, I'm an adjunct professor at the Islamic Seminary. So grading time is always tricky, right? Because you're trying to figure out, okay, class participation, how much, let's say that's 20. Then the response papers, certain amount, then you have a final research paper, presentation. So let's say it's 40, 40 points, right? So 40 is the maximum that you're allotted to get. But you don't get extra beyond what already, what has been allocated. So when you think about doing the fard prayer, it's not only that you're checking off the box. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you reward that's beyond an extra what has been allocated for that. And this is from Allah's giving. And this is from... Allah's generosity towards us. He is Al Kareem. He is Al Wahhab. He is Al Mun'im. So when we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we show gratitude to Him, we should always reflect on the reality that we are thanking the one whose giving has no limits. So we say, Ya Allah, O oh Allah, that La Mani'a Lima Tu'ati. There is no one that can prevent you from giving. Or there is no limitation to that which you can give. And if you have restricted something, there is no one that can give that. If you close the door, that's it. That's the end. No one can give you that. right? So when Allah, and another way of saying that is whatever you attempt relying on yourself, will always be difficult and whatever you set out to do relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be easy. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us. A uh, reminder that tomorrow we have the halaqa with Dr. Tariq in person. I know we got used to following him online but it's nice to meet each other and uh, be here you know in the in, in the in-person environment so everybody's welcome to join us if you're able it's a Friday night why not um, and then we'll uh, that will be at the same time at 7 p.m. and then on Sunday morning we're continuing with the story of Musa and the story is starting to heat up and get more interesting as uh, Musa's a teenager now and a young man and so he's kind of getting into trouble because he's passionate and he cares about justice. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that and, and how you can make unintentional mistakes. And what does that mean? And why are unintentional mistakes not a sin? Um, this throws people off sometimes. So we'll proceed to the last segment, the adhkar. Uh, we'll begin with hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Because we are in dire and utter need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this difficult sensitive moment. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakeel ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير استغفر الله أستغفر الله 
Astaghfirullah 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 Tubtu ila Allah Wa nahaytu qalbi Amma siwa Allah Astaghfirullah Tubtu ila Allah Wa nahaytu qalbi Amma siwa Allah Astaghfirullah Tubtu ila Allah Wa nahaytu qalbi Amma siwa Allah Astaghfirullah Tubtu ila Allah Wa nahaytu qalbi Amma siwa Allah Astaghfirullah Tubtu ila Allah Wa nahaytu qalbi Amma siwa Allah Astaghfirullah Tubtu ila Allah ونهيت قلبي عما سوى الله يا حي يا قيوم 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 يا حنان 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 يا منان 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 يا الله 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 فاعلم انه لا اله الا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والله يعلم متقلبكم ومثواكم لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا 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 الله لا إله 
إلا الله محمد رسول الله. If there are any questions, we can we can take them. I know we just spoke about gratitude, so there may not be. That's uh, something that's always fresh in our minds. If there if there are any questions, we'll be happy to take them. Otherwise, we'll send our praise and salutations on the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's Thursday night. These are the times the Prophet said that the salawat on me are ma'rooda. They are presented to me on the day of Jum'ah, which begins from Thursday night. So this is a wonderful time, salam, to send salawat. I think you know each of us should be doing at least a hundred in a day. The reason I say that is because we're already doing subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, right? And we say, la ilaha illa wahdahu la sharika. I think we're saying ayatul kursi throughout the day. So the one which is missing is salawat on the Prophet So that's the reason that I'm emphasizing it. Do the other adhkar, but make sure that you add that uh, to your routine as well. Allahumma salli afdal salatin ala أسعد مخلوقاتك سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عدد معلوماتك ومداد كلماتك كلما ذكرك الذاكر نوغفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه May Allah bless all of you. Jum'a Mubarakah. And we'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa